YouTube, today I will be doing my second review of the Grisha Trilogy, Siege and Storm. Firstly, I'd like to say this will, as this is the second book in the series, series I this will contain spoilers. So please stop now if you haven't read it or don't want the spoilers. Um, if you have read it or you just like spoilers, I know people who like spoilers before they read things, please continue to watch. Uh, this one for me was a bit of a mixed bag. I, the, my favourite scene in the whole three books is within this book. So the story so far, we've left off Alina and Mal who have just been captured in the first book by the Darkling. Alina has had the, uh, antlers from the stag put around her neck and uh, the fabricator David has attached them. They can never come off. Uh, the, the, the Darkling himself has actually tuned himself into those antlers and is using Alina, um, using Alina's power of sun summoning. They then get away in the end of the last book from the Darkling because uh, Alina manages to overcome his use of her power and Alina uh, throws off the shackles of him being able to do that and they run um, Alina and Mal run away. At the start of this book they are on the run um, and as is predictable in these sorts of things, the Darkling catches up with them. The Darkling then, uh, they ca they're captured by the Darkling. He then commissions a vessel in order to go up into the icy flows and <laughs> um, so that they can catch the sea serpent and make the second amplifier. Um, This um, vessel that they have commissioned is by a privateer, he calls himself, um, but a pirate essentially called Stromhold. And he um, reminds Alina of a sly fox in appearance and his, the way he works his vessel. Basically, they're being held to ransom against each other. Mal is being told he has a week to um, track the sea serpent. Uh, otherwise, both of... And um, Alina is also kept away from him. They're not allowed to speak. Um, they only see each other once a day across the um, deck of the ship. And basically, Mal has been told that he will start lopping off, off bits of her... Um, if he doesn't find the sea serpent. Death Knot comes around, 12th hour, he discovers the sea serpent, um, and it's at this moment that Stromhold rescues them, basically, from uh, the Darkling. Once Stromhold has got Alina and Mal away from the Darkling, they hop off onto another vessel, and this is the bit that's my favourite bit. It's the description of them getting onto this vessel that Alina and everyone else who is unaware is just thinking that it's another ship. Um, but the description and the... We, we described it exactly how Alina would see it in... And then it takes off. And it's a flying vessel. And it's it's not so much the idea of someone who's never seen or heard of an aeroplane or anything like oh, a glider or anything like that because it is run by the squallers. He, um, Stromhold has squallers within his crew. Um, it's, it was beautifully written. It, it was obvious it took a long time to polish that piece of writing and it was really beautiful. But as you can see, I've got a bookmark in the top here. That happens here, a hundred pages in. Then, up until about page 350, 
close to nothing happens. Uh, they arrive back, they think they're being kidnapped. He's, uh, Mal and Alina are unaware of where Stromhold is taking him, taking them. They, um, he says they can go if he doesn't, if they don't like where he takes them to. He uh, promises them. They get back to, all of a sudden, they're back at the palace. And it turns out Stromhold is Prince Nikolai, the uh, purported bastard second son of their empire. That's it. That's all that happens for the next 150 odd page, 250 pages. 250 pages. Basically, they're back at the small, um, at the little palace, small palace, and she goes through this, she can connect with the Darkling, uh, do I love Mal, does Mal love me, do I love Nikolai, does Nikolai love me, it was really, 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 really boring, really boring, um, and then they, they did all this prep and there was all this sort of technical, not even technical, just boring lists of things that they had done to prep for the eventual Darkling invasion with his army. And none of it mattered. None of it mattered. No, they got caught with their pants down. And then they have the fight that's there and then they get away again she tries to kill him obviously doesn't because there's another book and they got away like it was maybe it should have been a duology but uh, the will I won't I do I love him do I love him do I love him you know, because there's three choices here. She's got Mal, she's got um, Nikolai, she's got the Darkling. I found it really juvenile. Not just young adult, juvenile. Um, I, I've seen that sort of thing done much better, is my problem. Um, Sarah J Mass in uh, Throne of Glass, oh my god, so much better. Um... So, in the end, uh, there wasn't enough, there wasn't enough of the magic in this, there wasn't enough fighting, there wasn't enough, um, the tiny little twist with Stromhold being the prince, who cares, um, and then the invasion by the Darkling at the end was just, the action wasn't there. So overall, this one was a two star. Um, I can't see myself recommending this one. So uh, if you agree with me, hit me up. If you don't agree with me, even better. Tell me why you like this book because I really didn't. Um, hit me up in a comment below. Um, thumbs down if you don't like my opinion. Haha, -ha, that's what it's there for. And I'll see you next time on Booktube. I'll bring you, next time I will be bringing you number three. Yes, I did read number three. So I will see you then. Bye.